The trees were part of the fabric of the neighborhood. They were part of the landscape. They're just that formative landscape of our childhoods. We would be told the story about the trees and how each one had been planted for a soldier who did not come home. So that really stuck in my mind. It was very profound. I, I remember hearing the story, never forgot it. They just act as these beautiful, silent sentinels guarding Shelburne Street. They're really remarkable when you first meet them. Because they live much longer than we do, their meaning continues much longer than any one individual's contribution. The community went through this trauma, 1914 to 1918, and made a commitment through the planting of these trees, through the other memorials around, uh, around the city, made a commitment to remember the sacrifice of these men and women. And I find it terribly sad that, that with only a few generations uh, in between, that a community could, could forget that. I don't remember when I first became aware of the trees um, because they would have simply been there and been part of my extended world of Saanich. So I think what's easier for me to remember is how I felt as I watched some of my natural world disappearing. I'm uh, Caroline Duncan, and I'm the former archivist at Saanich Archives. I initiated the Saanich Remembers World War I project in 2012 as a community project to commemorate the centenary of the First World War. Well, my name is Ray Travers. My full name is Oliver Raymond Travers. I connected um, with Ray through our shared interest in the uh, Memorial Avenue trees. Well, the original idea of the uh, Memorial Avenue in Shelburne was to be a British Columbia memorial. The organizing committee the, got the support of the Union of BC Municipalities in 1921. The idea was to plant one tree for every soldier lost. Well, that uh, was a noble idea, but uh, given the, uh, the, the terrible loss of life in World War I, really it wasn't a practical idea because uh, we lost 6,000 soldiers in, in BC, but there was only space for 800 trees. And so what happened was the original idea of being a British Columbia memorial ceased to exist because other communities were developing their own memorials. So Shelburne Memorial Avenue became a, a memorial for the greater Victoria area. I'd be happy to share my understanding of the original planting ceremony on October 2nd, 1921. The Premier of the day was there, John Oliver, the Lieutenant Governor of the day was there, Walter Nickel. It was the chaired by Brigadier General uh, R.P. Clark from the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. There were 5,000 people there. Now imagine, City of Victoria, 45,000 people, Saanich 5,000, Mount Doug way out in the farmland, in what was then East Saanich, and 5,000 people arrived. My name's Joan Wenman. Both sides of my family are from Saanich. Two of my great aunts served as nursing sisters in the First World War. I remember my dad talking about being with some students and planting London plane trees uh, on Shelburne Street in 1921. You know, it was a military school, and their students before them and the staff before them were involved in the, in the First World War. I visualized Dad would have taken students down Richmond and Knight Avenue and worked with them in planting trees. And there were big metal grates put around the, the trees to protect them. In the 70s sometime, Dad had a phone call, and somebody had found up at the university one of these metal grates with a, a plaque on it to do with the effect that this, this tree had been planted by students of university school, or St. Michael's University School, as it is now. There was a quote from a newspaper that I came across. It was a direct descendant of, um, of a man killed in the First World War. The family had um, taken part in, um, in planting a tree 
in 1921. I think it was maybe two decades later, they came back and they're quoted in the paper. They marked the position of the tree because it was near a field, it was near a white gate, they had all the markers to know where that tree was. And they commented that, you know, the field is gone, the gate is gone. All of the markers that told them where the tree was are gone. The trees used to have plaques saying who planted them and other things, those were all gone. So even within a few decades, some of that memory was disappearing. When I read that quote in the paper, I thought, imagine going back to a place of memory and it's just gone. They had no way of identifying that tree anymore. The thing that had been so important to their memory of their loved one was no longer important to the community. I'm Stephanie Gould, and I grew up in Saanich. I'm Margot Tubman, and I was born in Victoria. I met Margot when we were in grade three. And that was 51 years ago. So we've been friends for 51 years. I lived close to the, the waterfront, close to Mount Doug Park, and Margot lived across Shelburne Street up on Parkside Crescent. Even to this day, I can remember almost every little twist and turn of that road between my house and her house. Being free to roam outside, it's just very integrating, right? So you play in the swamp and you get dirty and mucky and wet, and then you go climb trees and you fall and you scrape yourself, that's okay. You wander around in the fields, you see the little mice. I, I liked all the little creatures. So your sense of not being isolated from the natural world, I think, became very profound living in Saanich because we had so much natural world available uh, to ourselves. You may call us a tad unconventional. A bunch of wonderfully wild and colorful individuals. People who really do give a hoot about animals. Perhaps we are a little extreme, a little out there, or way out there. And yes, we do fuss over every small detail, but that's what makes us, us. Welcome to Uncommon. Your dry skin story changes. From one day to the next, discover Userin Complete Repair Cream, the complete solution for dry skin. It contains urea to bind water to the skin and ceramides to strengthen the skin's natural barrier. For an immediate relief of dry skin that lasts for 48 hours. Userin Complete Repair, recommended by dermatologists. This time, it's your big move. Your stuff. There will be no compromise. Hendra Moving and Storage, the local moving company you can trust. For over 30 years, they've set the standard with accurate on-site estimates and professional full packing services. With the largest heated indoor moving company warehouse on the island, your furniture is kept safe and warm. As an allied bandline agency, they move locally and around the world. Make no compromises. Choose Hendra Moving and Storage. They do it right every time. I do not like my roof with moss. I do not like its granule loss. I do not like the UV rays that shorten shingles useful days. I need a clear protective shield. That's why the Roof Doctor has so much appeal. The great Canadian Roof Doctor offers revolutionary roof armor, a spray-on treatment. It stops shingles from drying out and glues in the granules, adding years of life to your roof, all at a fraction of the cost of a new roof. The great Canadian Roof Doctor. Don't re-roof, weatherproof. On a long hike, your footwear means everything. Loa boots offer the best in comfort and quality. Handmade in Europe for over 90 years. For your next great adventure! Robinson's Outdoor Store. The world is changing rapidly. Be in the know for live updates as they happen. When they happen. And on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check has the info you need to know. Because, because we're, we're in this together. together. Some things just make you smile. For your daily LOL mama, tune in to Check News at 6. I'm not a cat. For Smile of the Day, brought to you by Dr. Ross Crapo and Associates. Smile like you mean it, making it possible since 1980. Smile of the Day, weekdays on Check News. So Saanich at that time was open fields and park and trees and beach, and we just spent a lot of time out of doors. It made me feel physically dynamic and strong because when you're out in nature and you're going up things and down things and through things and around things, you feel good about your body and you learn about 
trees and their shapes and their sizes. We certainly were very aware of that avenue of trees and loved that avenue of trees. I remember one of the first things that happened is being away for a summer holiday with my parents and coming back and seeing all the big equipment in the field in the swamp behind my house and they're ripping it all up. And it was the beginning of a new subdivision. And it made me cry. Like I felt so sad about what they were doing to all the little creatures and the trees. July, August of 1971, we noticed that they had cut down some trees near the corner of Mackenzie and Shelburne. At that time, they were cutting trees to make way, I believe, for the University Heights shopping mall. And that was really the beginning of those development pressures in Gordon Head. They are living things, and so to see them cut down like that as a young person, I just found it very upsetting. So we decided that we would write a petition and go around the neighborhood and collect signatures from all of our neighbors and send the petition into the mayor. We were protesting the cutting of the, the trees, the trees they had cut, but also really hoping to stop more cutting. The fact that you're a young person is pretty much irrelevant. You are a person, and if you're a person who wants to create change and have a voice, then that's what you do. It's just about being a person engaged with the world, and age shouldn't be a barrier. Our petition was August the 12th, and only days later we received a letter back from the mayor, Hugh Curtis. And of course, at age 12, receiving a letter from the mayor makes you feel very important. If we hadn't done that petition, and probably other people who had spoke to council, and there will have been many people involved, but if every single one of us had stayed home, then the trees would have been cut down. In our childhood minds, we had saved the trees and have always felt really great about that. I hadn't thought about the trees in any particular context for some time, um, and it did wake up in me, all those recollections, the memories of my time with Stephanie and what we did, but mostly I was so pleased that people were not losing track of the past. Dad was uh, getting up in years, and I remember driving with him down Shelburne Street, and the hydro crews were out mangling the uh, London pine trees because, of course, electricity went uh, down Shelburne Street. And if you look at the plane trees near Mount Doug Park, they're terribly misshapen because the hydro line's going right through the plane trees, but the plane trees seem to have endured. But I remember that that upset Dad. My name is Susan Bryce, and I'm a Saanich councillor. I've been on council since 2005. Saanich had just completed a Shelburne Valley Action Plan, which is a vision for the next 25 years as to how Shelburne Valley was to with any changes, what was going to, to be accomplished to make it much more of a people place and to revitalize the whole area. Then came along this project of the memorial uh, dedication. We then were able to ensure that we've passed policies that in this redevelopment of Shelbourne, any trees that are planted are plain trees, that they're done with a plan that will help to replace any of the trees that had been lost over the years, and then to complete the story. And so it is an opportunity for us to ensure that this wonderful choice of tree will be a permanent part along Shelbourne for the next hundred years. My name is Dr. Hilary Layton, and I am an associate professor in the School of Environment and Sustainability at Royal Roads University. The Latin name for the plane tree is Platinus, and uh, that derives from uh, Plato, the Greek philosopher. It comes from the Greek root platus, which means broad. And in terms of sycamores, this one does have a very broad leaf, a generous leaf. It's what's underneath the trees that's also fascinating. It's a very complicated and complex thing that we don't see from the, from the street. And that's its root system. Uh, and these big trees uh, have uh, vast root systems. Um, and what uh, aids those root systems are a symbiotic fungi 
uh, a mycorrhizal fungi that reaches out and goes much further than their root system possibly could and allows for molecules and information resources to transfer from tree to tree in these thread-like hi-fi uh, that connect all of the trees on that boulevard. And that network allows early warning signals. It allows trees to uh, communicate between each other if there are uh, invasives or threats or disease. And actually, it's also a way that some of the older trees can uh, release their goodness to some of the seedlings. Just like we do in human culture, our elders often impart their wisdom to us before they pass, uh, you know, helping us to flourish when we're younger. So it's just a beautiful, a rooted system of belonging. It's a family system. It gives it its strength that we don't see from the street. You know, there's such resiliency in these trees. That's why they're selected to be planted in so many cities. They can really weather uh, changes in the climate and all the seasonality. You know, they're very, very strong. And in that way, uh, they remind us of, um, you know, what it takes to survive. encourage anyone who's visiting these trees, if you can sit for a time at the base of a tree, we can learn so much there. Or as you, remembering as you touch a tree, that it's in fact touching you. It's a living being. So it's this beautiful reciprocity that can occur when we slow ourselves down and spend time and look into, not just at the tree, but look into the life and the characteristics and the family system, the rooted system of the trees and its life cycles. We can just learn so much from trees. At Charmin, we're all about the science of softness. See, it's two times more absorbent, so you can use less. Charmin Ultra Soft is always worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have one more test to conduct. We all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Alberni Power & Marine, Vancouver Island's premier boat dealership, is the largest mercury dealership in Canada. Number one in BC for repowering boats. Award-winning service team. Alberni Power & Marine, dependable quality you can count on. Just south of Duncan, look for the rooster. It's the original Old Farm Market, the home of local produce, but there's a whole lot more. Take the time for a frosty treat, or taste some of the best baked goods in the valley. Drop in and see what grows on you. It just might be a monumental experience. Every trip on Vancouver Island should include a stop right here. The Old Farm Market in Duncan and Oak Bay, just look for the rooster. With over 80 feet from bow to stern, our fleet of Sailor C-Class catamarans are the largest and the most spacious in BC. More square footage means you'll have more personal space to really cruise. There's never been a better time to check out some pretty awesome whales and marine life. With the support of donors like you, the Victoria Foundation distributes more than a million dollars a month. We help feed the hungry, assist newcomers, invest in health care and research, provide scholarships and support the arts. Our grants are mostly generated by endowment funds which are invested to create interest and an ongoing annual income. That means steady, sustainable support. The Victoria Foundation, connecting people who care with causes that matter. Royals Watch, your all-access pass with the Victoria Royals. Tune in to Check News at 5 every Saturday all season long as we bring you inside the Victoria Royals. And stay up to date with the latest team news and events on the ice and in the community. Royals Watch is brought to you in part by Archie Johnson Plumbing and Heating, 65 years in business. Budget Blinds Victoria, style and service for every budget. So in 2012, when it got to the point where, where I wanted to um, initiate this project, I knew from my research that what we'd need was grassroots support 
project, I really wanted the heart of the project to come from residents of Saanich uh, and for them to really drive that. Um, so I turned to Mary Jane Shaw and naturally turned to Ray Travers as well. I got involved, interested in uh, World War I history uh, in the 1980s mainly because I wanted to uh, visit the battlefields and find out uh, uh, with, with a greater understanding of what my, both my grandfathers were experiencing in World War I. And um, that formed the basis of the Saanich uh, Remembers World War I Committee. And we were joined by Sidney Allenson, the um, writer and historian. We had a wonderful First World War honor roll. We decided we would structure the project around that honor roll. It listed 355 names of Saanich men and women who had served in the First World War, some of whom had died. We thought the best way to honor these people would be to individualize them, really tell their personal story. So as a core part of the Saanich Remembers Project, we wanted to do biographies on each of those individuals. And so it led from there. We set up a, a committee and, uh, and uh, uh, developed a plan. Uh, there were eight objectives and, 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 and uh, six actions. Ray Travers and Mary Jane Shaw um, really then spearheaded the, um, the preservation of Memorial Avenue and took it up to the um, Saanich Council level. Part of the Memorial Avenue Committee, a number of, uh, of improvements have already occurred. We've got eight interpretive panels, the entire length of the street. And we've got what we call medallions, the entire length of, of, of Shelburne, from Mount Doug Park uh, down to Bay Street. We've got a commitment uh, to build stone gateposts at each end. Those will be going in this summer. And this is all leading up uh, to the 100th anniversary of the original planting uh, on October 2nd, uh, 2021. And so we've got a, a very important uh, a milestone uh, in the history of the trees. The Dedication Memorial Drive gave us an opportunity to come together to intergenerationally reflect on enormous sacrifices that have been made, to consider our own lives, to contemplate how we can make ourselves worthy of the sacrifice. It also gave us a chance to thank Ray Travers and the others he had worked with to bring this project together. Here we are on the street of unfinished dreams, a great testament to the sacrifice of the world wars and also to the dedication leadership of Ray Travis who helped lead this Memorial Street revitalization. The trees now represent residents lost in all of Canada's wars. For example, in 2010, the grade seven students at Gordon Head Middle School and their teacher Alex de Medeiros organized the planting of trees to commemorate two local soldiers killed in Afghanistan, Andrew Nuttall and Miles Mansell. We wanted to connect the experience of the community and really for the community to renew its responsibility and ownership over that memory of the war. And so the avenue continues to evolve as a memorial. My grandfather on my mother's side served in World War I and mercifully he returned home. And so our family is indebted to the fact that he was able to go over, return and continue a full life here in Canada. And we know that many families do not share that same advantage and so for them we remember. Often we see more of our likeness than our difference with the more than human world uh, in, and in terms of that, in terms of our seasonality, in terms of our life and death, in terms of our um, ability to survive and thrive and flourish. And trees are just a beautiful mirror uh, for all of those uh, rhythms and cycles of life and death. It's natural. There's a huge symbolic importance of the London plane tree. It was uh, symbolic to many people as reminding and many of the soldiers of the tree-lined roads of rural northern France and Flanders. It's got a big wide leaf that is a maple leaf-like. People drive along Shelburne Street. They may admire the canopy of trees and not know anything about them. Through the interpretive signs, through the restoration of the trees replanting, it gives them this new connection to the community, a new appreciation for their own neighborhood. As a young girl, I was more concerned with 
environment and the trees as living things. But as a mature woman, I now look at them and I'm really moved and it makes me remember what sacrifices people made in the war and the lives that were lost. When I think about that effort to plant those trees, I think of the, the city and the community coming together as people um, and contributing to the creation of the growth and the hope and the new life. Trees are wonderful memorials because they speak to being alive, that they are living and they show that even when things are very hard and people do die, that the memory continues, which is a kind of living. In our lives, if we can find some appreciation, I think that's what the big picture is that we can get out of, of that avenue. A tree is alive and that gives us hope. So there's something about a memorial that allows us to keep hoping in the face of loss. Thank you, Ray Travis, from everyone in Saanich. And you are part of this street of unfinished dreams, which was your dream to make sure it continued. Thank you, Ray.